But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets, Revelation 10 verse 7 And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand, Luke 8 verse 10 May shall be purified, and made white, and dried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand, Daniel 12 verse 10. How you shall be judged in sixteen different courtrooms after you die. Here is a list of the sixteen courtrooms that you must need go through before stepping foot on paradise, one court of salvation, two court of baptism, three court of fruit of the spirit, four court of gift of the spirit, five court of restitution, six court of forgiveness, seven court of works for God, eight court of giving, nine court of idle and vain words, ten court of accountability, eleven court of sacrifice, twelve court of fear and unbelief, 13 Court of Lord's Supper, 14 Court of Worldliness, 15 Court of Children, 16 Court of Holiness, the Courtroom of Restitution, this is what happens in this courtroom, up until the day you died, anything you had in your possession that did not belong to you, or anything you borrowed but failed to return, or anything you took without the owner's knowledge, permission, no matter how big or small, that thing will make you fail in this courtroom unless you return IT before your death, also, any unpaid debt, or anything you acquired or purchased through unlawful means will show up on a huge screen, and it shall make you fail and be kicked out of this courtroom, if the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed, walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die, none of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him he hath done that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, Ezekiel 33 verse 15 16 Owe no man anything. Romans 13 verse 8 After you become born again, you must do what Zacchaeus did in Luke 19 verse 110, according to verse 10, Jesus says salvation comes to you after you restore the things that do not belong to you, Satan deceives believers to think baptism washes away all past sins, yes, it does. It washes away your sinful act of the acquisition, but it does not wash away that stolen or borrowed item you are still keeping in your possession. This means as long as you keep it, it defiles you, because God sees it the same way he sees a stolen item, also if you do not have that item in your possession, find its value, and pay it unto the owner, if there is absolutely no way of finding the owner, give that money unto God and he shall give it back unto the rightful owner in a different way and form, if you use your manipulative skills to rob governments by paying less than your fair share of taxes, fees, or if that is your profession as a tax expert, know that all those records you secretly delete will be pulled up on the screen on this day, and you shall be cast out to join all your clients who benefited from your corrupt services, swindlers will find real swindlers in hell my friends, and so shall the corrupt spend eternity with their kind of devils. There are those who twist marital laws to acquire extra wealth from their spouses, and there are those who use all kinds of means, from charging outrageous interests on loans to tricking the system to their advantage, I tell you this, all those records are waiting for you up there. Repent. Go before the Lord, reason with him, and he shall give you a fair figure and also help you pay it back as restitution. Do this now, and you shall be able to proceed through this courtroom. Also, souls who fail in this courtroom include all who borrow Bibles but forget to return, married couples who take monies from their partners without telling them, those who illegally take products from their workplaces, government officials who used even the tiniest of all resources and materials for their own benefits, etc. Always remember that God sees and judges not as a man, here in this courtroom. The crime of stealing a penny is the same as that of stealing a sack of gold. If your profession leaves you with no choice other than doing things that will make you lose your soul, ask the Lord, and he shall give you a new one, remember, Jesus is always hiring on his field of souls. He is the best master to work for. If you have not finished paying the dowry of the woman you are living with, you better seek her father's relatives, 
Find how much you are still owing, and pay ITOFF speedily. Please do not confuse marital papers you signed with dowry, which scripture requires, beloved, now is the time to cry unto God, and he is so willing to help you remember and also help you perfect your restitution, because after you die and land in this courtroom, there is nothing like mercy or forgiveness, heaven is for those who are without spot or wrinkle, please find and understand the meaning of spot and wrinkle here on earth because you do not want to find it with regret and shock in this courtroom, may we all humble ourselves and make use of this great mercy the Lord has shown unto us in these last days, that we may be counted worthy of entering paradise, Amen. The Courtroom of Forgiveness, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses, Matthew 6 verse 14 15 in this courtroom, this scripture will search through all your heart and life, if there is any unforgiveness, no matter how small, the voice shall say unto you depart. Dear beloved, even as you are reading this, if you remember someone has anything against you, or there is any appearance of unforgiveness or issue between you and your spouse, family member, co-worker, neighbor or anybody, please go and reconcile with that person, if you appear in this courtroom with any unforgiveness in your heart, the court will see you as someone who thinks of himself wiser than God, the forgiver of all sins, and that is how you will leave the court no choice but to hand you over to those wicked devils in hell who do not have forgiveness, the truth is, it is far easier to let go and forgive a sin, than to appear in this courtroom and feel the crushing weight of the words depart. 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 You have nothing to lose when you forgive, let go that unforgiveness today, and God will acquit you, and you shall proceed freely out of this courtroom, hallelujah. There are those who, during their lifetime, never showed respect unto the message of the gospel by accepting it, let us call them unbelievers, and there are those who accepted it, let us call them believers, when an unbeliever dies his soul lands in the kingdom of Satan to be tormented until the final day of judgment, because he never spent a moment of his lifetime seeking the gospel, and so God does not spend his moment seeking his soul after his death, whereas when a believer dies, because he had shown respect to the gospel by accepting it, God shows him the respect by sending his angels for his soul to face judgment, here is one clear thing to understand, when the angels show up to take a soul to heaven, it does not mean that soul is qualified to enter heaven, also, if angels carry a person who is still alive to visit heaven, it means God wants to give him a revelation for the church back on earth, it does not necessarily mean that person's name is in the book of life, however, if the person dies on earth and angels carry his soul up, it only means he is qualified to stand trial before God, there are only two destinations for his soul, these are, one heaven, two hell and where he goes to spend eternity is determined by the verdict after his trial. There are sixteen separate courtrooms where his trial takes place, after he goes through all these sixteen courtrooms of heaven and he is found perfect without spot or wrinkle, that is when the Lord Jesus Christ receives him, welcomes him, and offers him an entry to paradise, but if he is found guilty at any of the sixteen courtrooms, his judgment process is terminated and he is found guilty of all the remaining, why? Because the word, judge says that whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all, James 2 verse 10 this is serious. That is why you must run away from any person who tells you God cares about holiness only at certain areas of life, that person is blind, and Satan is using him to make sure you fail at your trial, if you are reading this then know that the Lord Jesus Christ is doing everything possible to save your soul, including giving you a final chance to read how you are going to be judged, and how to avoid a guilty sentence, so you do not end up like the souls presently suffering in hell, who never got this chance to read this, use this final opportunity wisely, and press in on the narrow path, straight into the gates of paradise, remember, it is better to be poor, needy, sick, homeless and suffer all the world's problems and enter paradise like Lazarus, than to have a good or simple life and end up in hellfire like the rich man, 
Luke 16 verse 19 31 Let us begin by assuming you just died as a believer, and the angels just carried you to the outskirts of paradise, they take you to a hall filled with others who had arrived before you, and tell you this, son of man, this is how far we can go with you, at this point onwards, you are on your own, wait here until that mighty angel calls your name to stand trial, farewell, thou son of man, at this point, you are on your own. All the life you had lived on earth is about to be weighed and judged, and you are about to find out where you shall spend the rest of eternity. The angels will then disappear, and this is how your trial begins, a mighty angel shall call your name, and ask you to step forward into the first courtroom to begin your trial process. 